Hello everyone, my name is Yara and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I want to see get adapted. First of all, let me just say, sorry it's been a while since I uploaded, check out my last video to get an explanation as to why. But anyways, I'm here. And 2020 has kind of been a big year for book adaptation announcements, like we're getting Percy Jackson on Disney+, Plus. we're getting the Kane Chronicles, the Devabod trilogy, the Poppy War, Evelyn Hugo. We just got a teaser for Shadow and Bone finally. There's just been a lot of announcements recently and I thought that with 2020 ending I would just put in my two cents as to what I want to see get adapted as long as there's this positive energy in the air in terms of book adaptations not like in general world because we are still in a pandemic. I'm of the belief that some stories are better suited towards some media formats more than others. Like I do think sometimes a book is the best way to tell that story, but sometimes I think there could be new ways and additional things that could be added to a story that you can't get in a book. Specifically like visual and audio elements. And also sometimes I just want to see my books get adapted and see them with my eyes. For most of the books on this list, I don't think there are any current plans to turn them into adaptations, or if there are, it's not really in the near future. So you're not gonna see anything that is definitely going to be made. Like I know Frederick Boffin books are gonna be made into shows, The Nightingale's gonna be a movie, and like I mentioned before, Shadow and Bone. And as per usual with my videos, I divided them into several categories based on the vibe and energy that they give off as an adaptation. So the first of that group is the coming of age slash rom-com that we need and honestly deserve. <laughs> first on this list is Love From A to Z by S.K. Ali. I actually haven't talked about this book at all since I mentioned it in a recent reads video. I think it was my first recent reads video, but I adore this book. It is one of my favorite contemporaries ever. It is about two Muslim teens who end up crossing paths on their way to Doha, Qatar. And this is a dual perspective novel and we do follow their love story, but it also has a lot more serious elements to it. For example, one of the main characters, Adam, has multiple sclerosis and he just received the diagnosis and he's trying to come to terms with it. And the other main character, Zainab, is actually going to Qatar because she got suspended for standing up to her Islamophobic teacher. I feel like there's been a gap in teen coming of age films in the recent years, especially ones featuring people of color. And the story is just so well done in so many ways. It is so heartwarming and adorable, but also has some heavy moments and moments that really pull at your heartstrings. And I also just want more positive Muslim representation in mainstream media. A lot of times these stories that are chosen to get adapted are the ones where people are really struggling with their faith or they leave their faith for a whiteboard or something like that. So it made me really happy to see that this story was just about two Muslim teams who were just living their lives. The next book in this category is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. And I read this book this year and I absolutely loved it. Leah Johnson has spoken on her Twitter about how she loves the rom-com genre and it's really manifested in how well this story was executed. I would definitely say it's more coming of age with a romantic element in it as opposed to just a straight up rom-com. But regardless, it's fantastic. This is about a girl named Liz Lighty from a small town in Indiana who at the beginning of the book finds out that the scholarship that she was relying on to go to her dream school fell through. And so she decides to enter for the contest to win prom queen at her school because the person that wins prom queen gets a scholarship. She runs despite not really feeling like she fits the mold of a prom queen. And along the way, she ends up falling for someone else in the running. I really appreciated Liz's character growth throughout the whole story. She puts so much pressure on herself to be the very best, to do everything that she can, to take care of her younger brother who has sickle cell, to just prove herself to the people around her. And I really liked how a big message of the story was that it's okay to put yourself first and think about what you want. I really loved all the relationship dynamics, both the platonic and the romantic ones. I liked how the challenges felt very natural and very honest. Similar to Love From A to Z, I just like to see more of these diverse stories and these stories from people of different backgrounds in a form of media that's more widely accessed. I want both of those adaptations to kind of be in the vein of To All The Boys I Loved Before on Netflix. Like the color schemes, the music, give me all of that. Then the last book in this category is Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kemmerer. This is pretty much strictly coming of age. There is a romantic element, but it is not a rom-com. It's actually quite sad. This is also a dual perspective novel. We follow Declan and Juliet. Juliet is dealing with grief after her mother dies and Declan is dealing with his the consequences of his troubled past and trying to escape his demons. At the beginning of the story, Juliet starts writing these letters to her mom and leaving them at her grave as a just way to let out her emotions. 
And Declan, who was working in the graveyard for community service, sees the letter and really resonates with it and decides to respond to it. And they begin this kind of pen pal relationship, not knowing who the other person is, but finding a lot of solace and relief in being able to share everything that they've had pent up inside of them for so long. So this would be like a very much sadder and darker version of Tasha and Lily on Netflix. That's another relationship where they're talking through a notebook and don't really meet each other until the end kind of story. But that one is much more happy-go-lucky. This is pretty deep, pretty heavy. I really liked the story, especially Declan's perspective, just because it talked a lot about how experiencing something traumatic can put a lot of weight and guilt in you that you perhaps don't necessarily deserve. And both Declan and Julia kind of realize that they aren't alone. And that whole progression is just really beautiful. And I think it's a really comforting message by the end of the book. And I personally haven't seen that many stories that target grief and guilt the way that this story does, at least in recent years. But still, I think this would just be a really valuable story to have in another medium. The next grouping I have is what I call the aesthetic cinematic ones. And the first one on this list is probably no surprise, and that is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. If you've heard anything about The Night Circus, it is probably how atmospheric the story is. And personally, my favorite part of the story was the circus itself because it felt like a character. It was so dynamic and it was so magical. The story is about this magical circus that always arrives places without warning. And in addition to that, there is a duel going on between these two magicians. And I just feel like it would be absolutely stunning to see all this magic take place. I also feel like it would have the most beautiful score ever. Speaking of music, I actually feel like this could be a great stage musical. Hear me out. This is a story about magicians, about performers. So wouldn't it be like extra cool and meta if you were actually an audience member in their performance? It would also probably need a lot of special effects, which I know is possible, but probably very expensive but possible nonetheless, and I feel like this would be great. It also has a love story element. To be honest, I don't remember it too much, but I feel like it just adds to that very enchanting vibe. Then we have The Gollum and the Genie by Helene Wecker. This is a book that is usually recommended in conjunction with The Night Circus, or like if you like The Night Circus, you should read this. And I understand the relation because they have similar vibes. Hence why I also think this would make a fantastic movie. This is about a Gollum named Chava, who is a creature made out of clay and whose master ends up dying on their way to New York City and she ends up alone trying to figure out her way as a newly created creature. And Ahmad is a genie from the Syrian desert who was trapped in a lamp. It's not actually a lamp, but genie lamp, that trope. Thousands of years prior to the story, but ends up being released by a tinsmith in the little Syria community in Manhattan. So again, one of the things I really loved about the story was the atmosphere. It takes place in turn of the century New York City. And we also get flashbacks to the genie scene in the desert. So just like location wise, I think they could have like such beautiful imagery. And I also think the story is very nice. The Gollum and the Genie end up meeting and they end up connecting because they are both lost in this city. And they are the only ones that understand what kind of thing the other person is going through. I think like this would kind of have a similar vibe to the movie Hugo, specifically because it's rooted in a lot of history. Like I learned a lot about the Jewish and Syrian communities in New York City at this time. I'm Syrian, I didn't even know about all this stuff. And I liked how the story was about the immigrant experience in various different ways, with the Gollum and the Genie actually not being from this world the same way as humans, as well as the immigrants in the actual communities that the Gollum and the Genie were becoming a part of. It's a story of friendship and finding connections, and I just think it's so beautiful. The last one in this category is The Kingdom of Bat by Marie Lu. I just talked about this in my most recent recent reads. Most recent recent reads. <laughs> And spoiler alert for my end of the year video, but this is definitely a new favorite. This follows the Mozart siblings and specifically Nanerl, who was Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's older sister. Both Wolfgang and Nanerl were child prodigies in music, but throughout the story, Nanerl is confronting the fact that she would not be allowed to do this forever, that she has a time limit for her passion, whereas her brother can go on and do whatever he wants with it. The Kingdom of Back is an actual thing that Wolfgang and Nanerl came up with when they were touring as children to occupy their time. But Marie Lu took this in to make it an actual magical world that they can enter. And it functions as this reflection of Nanerl's dreams, her hopes, as well as this anger that she has inside of her. Again, I keep repeating myself with this category, but 
the kingdom of back would be so good to see visually, as well as the changes that we get to see in it as we progress through the story. This is another thing where I think the music will be very fantastic. This is a story about the Mozarts, so there'd be a lot of their music. And I feel like that could be really beautifully incorporated into the score. And the fact that this book is so centered on music and this love of music, I think it'd be so awesome to have the music play a part in the thematic elements. I also kind of see this being like Hugo, whereas the Gaulle Magini kind of had more of the setting because Hugo was set in France and the Gaulle Magini was set in New York. This one I see it more in the fact that we're following these two kids exploring and learning about stuff and how film was really important to Hugo, music is really important to this. Personally, I just really connected to a lot of the emotions of the story and, and so I would really like to see that. The last grouping that I have are the books that I think would make very addicting TV series. Pretty much everything that I just talked about, I was considering in a movie or in the case of The Night's Work as a theater format, because I feel like those stories are contained enough to be in a one-time sitting format. These next ones I feel like need to be in a longer series format, either because the story is just very expansive or because I feel like it would benefit from an episodic format. So the first one is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I haven't talked about this yet in a recent reads. It's gonna come soon, but I really loved it. The hype is so real. It's a modern day King Arthur retelling with a kind of twist. We follow 16 year old Brie Matthews who goes to an early college program in UNC Chapel Hill, who is not only dealing with the recent death of her mother, but who also witnesses a magical attack her first night there that no one else sees. And through a series of events, she ends up meeting a boy named Nick who introduces her to the Legendborn who are the descendants of the Knights of the Round Table. So King Arthur and stuff. And the more she learns about her place in this world and other forms of magic that are at play. I think this would be a great TV show because it has just so many addicting elements. It has a competition where Brie and other people have to do a bunch of trials. It has a lot of mystery elements as well as Brie's trying to figure out what's going on with this world as well as what's going on with her mom. There's also a love triangle in here that I didn't mind and actually was very intrigued by. And it's actually this kind of aspect that I think makes it better suited to a TV show because I feel like a lot of the character relationships are built on very subtle moments. Even though the book is relatively fast paced, I feel like it has a lot of these very small but important moments that I think could be really given their due significance in a longer format series. I also really like the world of the series because it has a lot of interesting commentary on colonialism and slavery and how the magic and the history of these worlds are shaped by the trauma of the past. I actually have no idea if an ad adaptation has been announced, but I hope it is because it's like so good. The next one that I think would be a good TV series is the Charlotte Holmes series by, what's her name? Bernie Calavallaro. I'll be honest and say this is not really a series that I absolutely love, nor have I even read the whole series. I've only read two of the books out of the four, but I just know this would be the exact type of show that I would want to watch. This is like an alternate universe where Sherlock Holmes and Watson were real people and we're following their descendants, Jamie and Charlotte. They're both attending this boarding school and are trying to uncover this murder mystery. This could honestly be a movie that I feel like it's short enough to be a series of movies, but I don't know. It just gives me the vibe that it would be a TV series, maybe because of Riverdale. I've only seen like one episode of Riverdale and I don't think I would like it, but it kind of fits the same niche category. I'm not doing a very good job selling this. I do enjoy the mystery aspect of the series, but what I really enjoy is the relationship dynamic between Charlotte and Jamie. And again, it's one of those things where it's built off of a lot of time and a lot of subtle changes. And I feel like those are best conveyed when you have a lot of time to spend with the characters like in a TV show. The last one in this category is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I feel like the series has been in development for an adaptation for like the longest time, but I don't know if there's been any news recently about it. This is a really popular book. You probably already know what it's about, but in case you didn't, it's a fairy tale retelling series, but in a sci-fi future. So this first book is a retelling of Cinderella, where Cinder, the main character, is a cyborg. And with this book, as well as with Legendborn, I just feel like there's too much content for it to be in one movie. I feel like we'd miss out on either the world or we'd miss out on characters if we did it in a movie format. I feel like a TV show would give us the amount of time that we need to really get invested because it truly is like the characters that make this series for me. It also has a very entertaining plot, which I think will be good to move the story forward in the TV show. But like, you're really, you're really in for it for the characters and all the relationships that develop. Perhaps an unpopular opinion, but I think this should be animated. I don't think it would be because mainstream culture kind of has this impression that only children's media can be animated. 
I think in general it's just easier to have a kind of sci-fi fantasy story animated, especially one that probably won't get as much of a budget. And I just want to see more animated stuff out there. So I believe those are all the books that I want to talk about today that I want to see get adapted. Please let me know if you agree with any of these or if you have any ones that you think definitely need an adaptation in the future. Or let me know about a book adaptation that's going to come out in the near future that you're really excited about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!